Hey everyone, in this video we're going to have a look at the selection sort algorithm. This algorithm, just like bubble sort, separates the array into a sorted and an unsorted partition. And the goal is to traverse the array, while doing so, look for the largest element in the unsorted partition, and swap it with the last element in the same unsorted partition. And once we've done that, that element will be in its correct sorted position. So, similar to bubble sort, initially the entire array is unsorted, so the last unsorted index is set to 4. We'll initialize a variable called largest to zero, and whatever is at position zero in the array will be considered the largest element based on our starting point. So when we start, we set three as the initial value for the largest element. And we'll start with the index i set to one, and we'll use it to iterate through the unsorted partition and find the largest element. So we'll begin by comparing the element at index one to the largest element at index zero. And since four is larger than three, we're going to change largest to one. Next, we're going to increment i to 2, and we compare the element at index 2 to the largest element at index 1. And 1 is not greater than 4, so we're just going to increment i to 3. Next, we're going to compare the element at index 3 to the largest element at index 1. And 2 is not greater than 4, so we just increment i to 4. And then we're going to compare the element at index 4 to the largest element at index 1. And 5 is greater than 4, so now we're going to change largest to 4. At this point, i is equal to the last unsorted index, which means that we completed our first traversal, and we found the largest element in the unsorted partition at index 4. Now note that the largest element is already in its correct position, therefore in this case no swapping is needed, and we just decrement the last unsorted index and it becomes 3. And now, everything from index 0 to index 3 represents the unsorted partition, while everything from index 4 represents the sorted partition. And then we reinitialize the variable i to 1 and the variable largest to 0 for the next traversal, and we start by comparing the element at index 1 with the largest element at index 0. And 4 is larger than 3, so we set largest to 1. Then we increment i to 2 and we compare the element at index 2 to the largest element at index 1. And 1 is not greater than 4, so we just increment i to 3. At this point, i reached the last unsorted index, which means that we completed our second traversal. And now we want to swap the largest element, which is 4, with the last element in the unsorted partition, which is 2. Now 4 and 5 are in the correct sorted position, so we decrement the last unsorted index and it becomes 2. Now everything from index 0 to index 2 is part of the unsorted partition, while everything from index 3 to the end of the array is part of the sorted partition. And after the swap, we set the variable largest to 0, and we set i to 1 for the next traversal. And then we go through the same steps again, we traverse the array, compare numbers, find the largest, and if necessary, swap the largest element into the last position of the unsorted partition. And we'll continue doing this until last unsorted index is equal to zero. And at that point, the entire array is sorted. Okay, now let's get to the implementation. And we start by creating the swap method. Make sure it's static so we can call it from the main method. It takes three parameters, the array we're sorting and the two indices of the elements we want to swap. We check if the indices i and j are the same. If they are, no swapping is needed and we simply return. If they are not the same, we create a temporary variable, call it temp, and we store the value of array i in it. We store the value of array j into array i. Now we just need to store the value of temp into array j. And that's it for our swap method. Now let's implement the selection sort. and we set the last unsorted index to array.length-1. Because at the beginning of the algorithm, the entire array is unsorted, so the last unsorted index will be the last valid index. And we want to continue as long as the last unsorted index is greater than zero. And once it gets to zero, that means that the entire array is sorted. And we want to decrement this on each iteration. Then we're going to initialize our largest index to zero. And then we create an inner loop starting from i equals one. And we'll continue until i is less than or equal to the last unsorted index. And we increment i with each iteration. So we want to traverse the unsorted partition and compare the elements at index i with the largest element. And we'll start at index one because the largest element is already at index zero. So if the element at array i is greater than the element at array largest, 
we update largest to i. So on the first iteration, we will compare 4 against 3, and 4 is larger than 3, and so largest is going to get updated to 1. And this continues until all elements in the unsorted partition have been compared to the current largest element. And after that, we drop out of the loop, and then we want to swap the largest element that we found with the last element in the unsorted partition, and we can use our swap method to do that. So we'll pass the array, and we pass largest and last unsorted index. And that's it, we have now implemented selection sort. Now, let's take a look at how this algorithm performs. A selection sort is an in-place algorithm because the memory used doesn't depend on the number of items being sorted. And this is because the partitioning happens logically within the array itself, and there's no need for an extra array to perform the sorting. Although some variables are created to store values like last partition index, largest and i, just like bubble sort, it's considered in place as long as the extra memory used doesn't depend on the number of items being sorted. It's a quadratic algorithm with a time complexity of O to the n squared. However, it doesn't require as much swapping as bubble sort because we only swap once per traversal. So on average, selection sort tends to perform better than bubble sort. But it's an unstable algorithm because it may change the order of duplicate elements. For example, in this case, we compare the red 6 with the largest element 3, and eventually 6 becomes the new largest element. And at the end of the traversal, it will take the last position of the unsorted partition, and it will end up in front of the green 6. So if you want an algorithm which is stable, selection sort might not be the best choice. So this was it for the selection sort algorithm. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.